I'm Kyle, sales manager and agronomist at the Garden City Co-op. Fall is upon us and with the recent abundant rain, there are a couple topics that I wanted to visit today about. First is the fall harvest of our corn crop. Although rain is usually always welcome in western Kansas, the timing, large amounts, and pattern of several rainy days in a row can create some problems. One of these problems is the potential for corn sprouting in the ears. Although the problem is typically rare, especially in, in our geography, it's not necessarily new to areas in the Corn Belt. There have been some reports in a few areas and in occasional fields of seeing a few lower kernels, mostly near the ear shank, starting to sprout due to moisture being trapped in the husks. Although it's unlikely sprouting will be a wide-scale problem, it's something I wanted to mention to be on the lookout for in your cornfields. A large amount of kernel sprouting on a fairly large amount of ears can have a potential result of overall lower grain quality test weights in addition to storage concerns. A second look out in your cornfields this fall is ear rot and kernel molds and fungus. There have been reports of some significant concerns and issues especially in areas of eastern and central Kansas and the southern counties of Kansas all the way through the Texas Panhandle. There are several different kernel molds, funguses, and ear rot diseases. Of those diseases, two or three are the biggest concerns because they have potential to produce mycotoxins. The concern of mycotoxin is the potential at high levels to be toxic to livestock and humans if consumed. Even the other types of molds and fungus diseases that do not produce mycotoxins are a concern as well because they can affect grain quality and test weights that could result in elevator dockage or even rejection if it were to get bad enough. If mold or fungus are present, the recent rains and moisture will most likely enhance the spread of the disease in the ears. As mentioned before, rain can create its own set of problems for fall harvest, but has been welcomed for this fall to help farmers get winter wheat up. Although it will take a little drying in order to get the bulk of winter wheat drilled, we still have some time to get the wheat in. For our area, optimum sowing dates for winter wheat are between September 15th and October 20th. If wet weather persists and the wheat drilling gets postponed towards the latter of these dates, there are a few things I would encourage to keep in mind. When sowing wheat into cooler wet soils, emergence will most likely be delayed, so the addition of a seed fungicide can be important. Additionally, later drilled wheat often results in plants decreasing fall tiller formation, so increasing seeding rates may want to be considered as well. Lastly, make sure we take a look at soil fertility, and particularly phosphorus levels. Foss is a very important aspect to wheat's tillering potential, so adding the foss on later drilled wheat can be even more important than ever. Cornfields should be continued to be scouted and monitored for ear molds and fungus and sprouting over the next few weeks prior to harvest. In addition, consider seeding rates, seed fungicides, and soil fertility, especially if it does get later before we can get the wheat drilled. Please feel free to contact any of the agronomists at the Garden City Co-op for any of your crop production needs.